So this is the handover for your Globe Car 600L. We'll begin on the outside of the van. Sliding door opens up, electronic lock, and just inside you've got your power switch for your step, which will slide in and slide out accordingly. Also on these models, you've got a concertina fly screen, grab firmly and slide across like so. Make sure that the concertina is slid back before you attempt to close the door. These have an electric close mechanism, so if you bring the door into position, it should draw the door in. At the back of the vehicle, you've got your filler point for your water. So turn the cap, nice firm press, and you should be able to pop the water cap off. Hose pipe straight in to fill up. Bike rack onto the back. Two cameras on this one as well. We'll talk about that later on when we go into the cab. Fold the deck down. Secure your bike hubs through with straps. They can be slid into position by adjusting the red knobs like so. And then secure your crossbars or seat bases into the same way. Just make sure this one's pulled back to about this position so that when you close it up, it doesn't foul against the frame. Open the back doors, and it opens up into the bed space and the loading space underneath. In the black box at the back, you've got your vehicle toolkit, which consists of your wheel jack, brace, etc. In the side locker, you've got your gas bottles. Got a, it's got a changeover valve on it as well. To turn on the gas, turn on one of the brass knobs. I'll just pull this strap forward so you can see what I'm doing. Turn on the brass knob on top of the unit. So this one says closed in the clockwise direction and open in the anti-clockwise. Open up anti-clockwise. Select and make sure that you're going through to the gas bottle that you want to go through to and then press your safety valve in. That allows the gas to go through the system. And then there's a second one on the base of the regulator. Push that one in nice and firmly with a key, and that should allow then the gas to go through the vehicle to your gas points. When you go to depart, you can switch off the gas, but the safety system there does actually activate if there's a collision or an accident to stop any gas from leaking off of the cylinders. So underneath the bed at the back, you've got your access to the fresh water tank. Within the fresh water tank is a submersible pump, which pumps the water around the inside. You've got one of two red access hatches underneath uh, the middle of the bed section. There's another access hatch, and that will also give you access into the fresh water tank. So if you want to drop solvents or cleaners, um, or inspect inside the tank, then you can do so. For winter storage, for draining off, if you're traveling long distances, there's a black steering wheel type mechanism. If you start to unscrew it, as the illustration shows, then you'll open it up. If you make a couple of turns on it, you can actually just leave yourselves with a transit carrying capacity of about 20 liters. Obviously, if you open it fully, uh, then it will drain the whole tank in its entirety. Right, so underneath the bed, um, inside the loading space, you've also got a drain valve for the water heater. These are thermostatically operated. In the event of the air temperature in this space going below two degrees centigrade, the blue tap at the top opens through 90 degrees, and you'll hear water starting to descend and escape out of the van. To reset it, you will need to turn it back through 90 degrees, so it's back in line with the pipework and then press this small blue button in at the bottom, and that will allow you then to prime the water heating system ready for use. Up at the top, above the door, you've got your winding handle for your awning. So unclip, like so. Hook up into the eye, and then 
twist out. Recommend that you have the sliding door shut. It's less likely for the pelmet to catch onto the top of the sliding door. Open up to a midpoint. We're about two meters off the side of the vehicle. Pull back on your leg in its entirety so that the knuckle joint clears the pelmet. Clear the leg at the other end and then rotate down. Unwind the mechanism through your fingertips. Lock it down to the floor and then jack it up accordingly and then repeat on the other side. So pull out on the mechanism, pull out on the leg, let it slide to your fingertips. Keep it on a fairly even kilter and lock it into position. And then continue winding the awning out. Full extension on this, about two and a half meters. They are sunshades. In wet or windy conditions, it's crucial that you put them away. They're not tolerant um, of the, the climate and the winds that we have up here. To put it away, it's the reverse. Unwind your leg. Fold the foot round so that the foot is against the pelmet and clip into position at both ends. So that again, the knuckles then clear of the pelmet on the inside edge. Repeat on the opposite end. Foot flat in. Push it in if it needs to be pushed in from this end. Just a finger tighten on the clamp and then wind in. There is a groove in the front of the pelmet, so if you wanted to use a driveway awning, uh, then you could do so. So your mains cable plugs into the side of the van. When you want to disconnect it, push down or blue tab, firm press or pull back, and it should release and then opposite end way around to put it back in. Always recommend that you connect to the side of the van first of all and then the power supply that you're going to be using. That way you're not taking a live lead across the site. Exhaust vent for the water heating room heating system. If you're using it on gas you will see a little bit of a condensation plume sometimes come off around these. Obviously if it's on electric uh, then you won't see anything at all. Down under the skirt you've got your wastewater outlet. So there's a tool that'll be in the glove box, um, 90 degree turn in one position, it's open to allow the gray water from your tank to discharge in the opposing position, it's closed. Your toilet cassette, there's a magnetic latch on the inside of the door frame so it should hold up into position and then the cassette pull up on the yellow lever inside firm tug back and it should allow the cassette to come out on a campsite you have collection points for these to go into so the yellow cap comes off the top completely tip it up through almost 90 degrees press the yellow button in and that allows the waste then to discharge out of the base before you load it back in up to a cap full of base chemical, or if you want to use a sachet, uh, a sachet mix with about two liters of water, everything poured in through the, the main neck. Give it a little swirl around and then load it back in accordingly. And lock your door afterwards. Fuel filler cap. The outer flap is not affected by the central locking, so you just open it up and then it's the ignition key into the cap, twist, and then fill up with fuel accordingly. Just inside the cap door, you've got your bonnet release. And underneath the floor at the front, you've got your access into your engine battery. But if you need to jump start the vehicle, we'll show you how to do that under the bonnet shortly. So to release the bonnet, center of the bonnet, there's a little lever, squeeze that one in and up it goes. Onto the red section there to support it open. Over on extreme left-hand side, you've got your screen washer inlet. If you want to access your brake fluid, power steering fluid, or the radiator reservoirs, you may find that you just need to undo these little clips 
to get in to that top part of that mechanism. Oil filler cap in plain sight. In front of it is your dipstick. Because the engine battery is located under the floor, if you ever need to jump start the vehicle, use the end of the ignition key and just release this little cap here, tip it back up through 90 degrees and attach your positive onto that section there. And then the negative goes onto the corresponding bolt and you can jump start the vehicle from that point. So with your water system, having turned on the 12 watt power inside the van, uh, with your water system, draw the water through. Earlier on, we heated this one up, so you see a little bit of steam coming off of it. If you fail to draw the water system through, then obviously you won't be able to heat it up properly. So repeat the process with the vanity unit as well. It ensures that you've got a continuity of supply coming through. So when you first get into the van, um, up above the sliding door, you've got a control panel. Bottom left-hand side, Turn that one on and that will engage your 12 volt supply. So when you go to interior lights, for example, you should be able to turn them on. You've got above it a battery level gauge. Battery at the front is indicating the health and condition of your engine battery. Battery at the back of the van indicates the health and condition of your leisure battery. Because we're currently plugged into the main supply, you'll see an amber light come on there. The other rocker switch, top one, is your level for your fresh water supply. We keep them low at this time of year. And then you've got one for your gray water supply indicating how much wastewater. So that's the wastewater from the shower tray, the vanity unit, the kitchen sink. It's a separate indicator for the toilet. For the room heating and for the water heating system, having purged the water through to make sure that you've got that continuity of supply ready for use, You've got two dials here. One on the right hand is for the task that you want to do. The one on the left is for the source of the unit. Turn the right hand dial anti-clockwise to either a 40 or a 60 degree position. You'll see a little green light come on on the display dial and it will heat the water up to 40 or 60 degrees. Whilst it's doing that, you'll see an amber light come on there once that amber light is extinguished, then it's achieved that temperature. It can take between 25 to 40 minutes, uh, depending on the output setting that you use. If it fails, uh, then you'll see a flickering or a red light come on, indicating that there's a problem or a fault. Turn the system off, check your gas supply, check your main supply, and then start again. If you just want heating, turn it towards the flame symbol. This doesn't activate the gas, this is purely for heating and what it will do is allow the van to warm up. The thermostat is between one and five, roughly between around about five and about 25 degrees centigrade. Um, as an output, the higher the number, the warmer it's gonna get. You will get a certain degree of water heatment, heating, but not to any specified or regulatory amount. If you want a combination of water heating and room heating, turn it to the 60 and flame position and it will bring the water up um, in a winter mode as it were for up to 60 degrees and also give you a room heating as well. And there we see the amber light come back on again indicating um, that the water temperature hasn't been achieved yet. Whilst we've been talking and setting this up this has actually been this little nodule here has been pointing towards the gas so we've been burning pure gas system um, in order for it to generate its heat to generate the water heating. If you were on a main hookup, then you have the option of using a 900 or an 1800 watt mains electric element, subject to the amount of amperage, roughly around about three and around about six amps or so draw from the circuit. If you're successfully plugged into the mains, you'll see an amber light on there, but you'll also see an amber light on in the center of the dial. In winter time, you could use a combination of the gas and the low setting on the electric or the gas and the higher setting on the electric. It doesn't increase the amount of heat. It doesn't increase the uh, water temperature. It just simply speeds up the process and gets the van a little bit warmer, more efficiently. So 
Underneath the bed on the right hand side, you've got three gas taps. The center one is redundant. It's not connected to anything at all. So don't worry about that. It's been left at a 90 degree or vertical position um, because there's no supply to it. There's no supply from it. So it's completely switched off. At the very top, you've got your gas supply to your hob. And at the base, you've got your gas supply to your water heating room heating system. They're in the horizontal position at the moment, which means that they're turned on, they're allowing the gas flow to flow through. If you switched off at the bottle, then you don't need to worry about turning off at these, but if you have concerns about the gas supply or if we're testing the gas system, then what we would do is turn them through 90 degrees like so, and that will isolate the supply to that individual appliance. When you first um, connect up your gas supply, or if you've uh, changed over a gas bottle, it's advisable just to burn some gas on the hob. The hob is the highest consumer of gas. So use a gas match or a lighter. Draw the gas through the system. Should burn with a nice even blue flame, like so. And that then ensures a better continuity. It's quite important that you do this, especially if you're going to use the water heater um, on gas or the room heating system, because it has a much smaller burner jet onto it. There's no isolation on these lids. So if you're cooking and someone leans on this, um, it will continue to burn. It will pop the glass. So make sure that the whole appliance has thoroughly cooled down before you close the lid over. So we're back under the bed and above the water heater, again on the right hand side. This is where your mains RCD system is located. Turning off and on the mains can be done from these control switches, just like you would do with a domestic fuse board in your house. Turn on the end switch first of all, lift it up. There's a little test switch on the top edge of that one. When you're pushing on it, it should automatically trip out, indicating that you have a safe, reliable supply of mains coming into the van. And then across on the supplementary switches to bring up the power supply for um, your battery charger, any power points, main supply to the room heating system, uh, whatever's required. So you have a 12 volt compressor fridge. Up inside on the right hand side, you've got a little bezel. Uh, because we're plugged into the uh, mains and also because we've got 12 volt supply on, you'll see a little green light on in there. When you rotate it through your fingers, the light will come on. The higher the number on the dial, the colder the fridge will become. On the day you come in to collect it, we would have turned it on in advance, so it should be nice and cold and ready for you. You've got a little separate freezer compartment up in the top. Rotate it through the opposite direction to turn it off. The light goes out. And there's a securing latch on the door as well. The latch can be left in a secondary position, which allows it then to ventilate for storage and stop it becoming smelly or mildewy. So you've got a fold down unit on your vanity unit. Pull out the little black stud on the end, let the tabletop fold over, turn your tap and your tap head around. You'll turn it on, there won't be any water coming through because you need to squeeze the trigger head, push it forward slightly and it locks it into position to allow water come through. If you want to use it as a shower, then pull the shower head out of the tap unit. Feed it up onto the hanger. And when you close the interior door open, just make sure that the shower head comes up through on there. Tuck everything down nice and neatly. When you're folding this away, make sure that the tap head is clear. Otherwise, when you fold the deck up, it reopens the tap. Fold that one up like so, and you get water all over the place. Silver bowl toilet. So you can maneuver into it any desired position. On the unfortunate named backside of the toilet, there is a lever. You need to pull that lever forward. That in turn opens a wastegate at the bottom of the toilet bowl. Let your waste go straight through. And then to flush the toilet, you press in on the blue button and you should get a jet of water going around the inside of the bowl accordingly to flush. That flush water is coming directly from your onboard freshwater tank, so there's no separate chemicals required. Close the lever over afterwards, stop any smells or odors coming back up through. 
When the cassette is approaching full, you'll see an indicator light coming on just here, telling you that it's time to get it emptied. So if you're going to use the third bed, at the back of the table, you've got two white buttons that you push down, and you should be able to easily lift the table mechanism off. Split the leg, like so, and pull out on this section, and you can obviously use this when you use it for a dining option as well, so that it locks into position. It will then go back down onto the lower ledge position, a bit of guidance is required, and then the supporting boards will come across the top and the infill cushions go in to make it up into the bed. So your cab seats um, are swivel, have a swivel function on them as well as height adjustment. Swivel function, first of all, there's a lever on the inside edge of each seat. Pull that lever forward and you should be able to swivel the seat all the way around. Armrests can be adjusted using the wheel so you can set them to whatever desired height you require them to go to. Make sure when traveling that your seat goes back into a forward position, you'll hear it lock in so it doesn't swivel inadvertently. Whilst you're driving. On the side of both the driver and passenger seat, you have these two paddles here. One at the back operates the height adjustment on the back of the seat, one at the front battery operates the height adjustment on the front. You've got a backrest adjustment as well and then your classic D-bar underneath the front for sliding the seat backwards and forwards. Because of the lines I tend to recommend that you drive with the seat in the lowest position and by blinds we're talking about the cab ones so you've got these little black pegs that you pull together. You'll have to drop camera out of the way and then draw the two blinds together accordingly to give you closure. For the driver and passenger doors, similar mechanism. Do it gently and carefully, they are quite fragile. And then lock off on that side. Because of the opening and closing of the blinds you will need to refit the camera so just moisten the fingertip it's a normal push on stud just make sure your glass is nice and clear like so be delicate with these pins um, there is a it's not immediately clear until you look at it more closely um, but there is a specific way that these go in together and although you think it will push in a lot further it doesn't go in much more than for driving i would recommend that you actually tuck the cable up away behind the head lining to just push the cable up through accordingly. It's a technicality but make sure this one is down whenever you go for MOT uh, because it does foul the vision of the driver and it will count as an MOT failure if it's left in position. When you turn on the ignition regardless of whether the vehicle is in reverse or not, regardless of whether the vehicle is into reverse or not, uh, you will get an image. There are two cameras. This is the lower one, which is mounted on the lower half of the bike rack, so it's looking straight back from the vehicle. If you press the V1, V2 button up the top right hand side, you will see a higher uh, image, which will give you a more palatial view. Um, if you are driving in traffic, for example. As soon as the ignition is switched off, that camera unit is also switched off. Cab controls generally, ignition key in. If you're gonna start the vehicle, make sure that your foot is on the brake clutch pedal. Make sure that the vehicle is in neutral. And you should be able to start up accordingly because we've left the sliding door open it's obviously coming up with that one on there if the step has not been retracted you may well hear a warning buzzer in the cab indicating that the step is still out it's not an automatic close light controls over on the left hand side of the stalk on and off and then back for main beam you've also got cruise control and limiter on this one so up for cruise and down for limiter and then adjust your plus and minuses to 
suggest, uh, to set the speed limits. Wipe controls over on the right hand side. Come back for your rinse. And then behind it, you've got your rear fog light and your headlamp beam adjustment. To drive the vehicle, pull the lever back towards you with your foot on the brake clutch and you will see a one and an auto symbol. In that mode, um, the vehicle will act as an automatic or a pure automatic and go up through the box. If you tap the lever to the left, the auto disappears and you're then drawing the lever back towards you to engage other gears. So we've gone up to gear two or back down to gear one and you can work it through a sequential box instead. Reverse on this, back towards me and back down and that will engage reverse. If you come back to the center and you don't see the auto mark, just knock the lever over again to the left and you should see your auto indication come back up accordingly. Central controls, you've got ventilation up on the top, so you've got your speed and temperature on that dial, and on the opposite dial, your outside and recirculation, and then around the top, your settings for your windscreen, face and feet vents. Air conditioning, press in on that one, turn it over to the recirculation, and obviously adjust your temperature setting according, and you should get a nice blast of cold air coming through. This one is for the heated mirrors. If the vehicle has been closed up um, externally properly, you should be able to press it on this one and it will activate central locking. Hazard light switch is self-explanatory. ASR is an anti-skid control. Routinely, it's, the device is always on. So if you accelerate hard uh, across a loose surface like the gravel that we're on at the moment, um, it provides engine braking to stop the vehicle from slipping. If you're perhaps driving on wet grass or if you were driving in icy conditions, you might prefer to actually disable the ASR system and then that way you would have direct throttle to wheel control so you can then control the vehicle better in those very, very slippery conditions. If the vehicle is more laden with weight, then you can activate this symbol here and it will slow down the gear changes and ascents uh, when you're uh, going up or down a hill um, to compensate for that weight. Over on the driver's door, you've got your electric mirror controls. On this generation, all four mirrors can be adjusted. So you have a toggle, select it in the direction of the mirror that you want to adjust, and then use your joystick then to open, close, and set the mirrors to the position. You can do the same with the blind spot mirrors as well. Electric windows are done accordingly. And there's also an additional central locking button on the driver's door too. So that concludes the handover for your van. If, I hope it's gonna give you lots of miles and lots of smiles, but if you have any questions, if you have any queries, you want to ask us um, anything about how the van operates or accessories that you want to add on at a later stage, please just pick up the phone, drop us an email, um, and we'll get right back in touch with you. Otherwise, take care, enjoy, and on behalf of Highland Camera Vans, drive, park, relax.